Hello and welcome to your daily dose of Satoshi's news. Today's date is Wednesday the 27th of March 2024, the year of a million transactions per second or more. Take custody of your digital assets today at rockwallet.com, including Bitcoin SV, the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin. Let's get into it. So let's start off a little bit of 365 days of Bitcoin history. What has history got in store for us today? Let's find out. So uh, we didn't do yesterday, which is the 26th of March. So on the 26th of March, back in 2020, it was like Craig Wright uh, wrote this blog post entitled uh, The Property Floor of Lightning. So let's have a quick look at this. Um, and this was uh, this was really fascinating, actually, because in this, when it says uh, the property flaws of lightning, uh, on the second paragraph, um, this is actually uh, referring to uh, Bitcoin itself. Um, he said here, um, uh, the tokens in Bitcoin are not stored on the blockchain. They are they are registered there. That is, tokens are exchanged between users and eventually registered on the blockchain, which acts as a distributed clearinghouse and registry or ledger. All changes are journaled, although, um, although multiple changes can apply before being written to the ledger. Where an individual or group exchanges Bitcoin tokens, property rights are also exchanged. But until it is registered on the blockchain, a risk remains that one party could double spend and take away the tokens from another. Bitcoin allows possession and access property as the owner or proprietor of the tokens may exercise power to exclude others. Unlike other digital property, Bitcoin can be subjected to um, bailment one. Uh, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, that's fascinating. So um, again, so it literally, it's almost as if Bitcoin is physically, well, it is going from physically from one device to the other. And it's the blockchain that actually uh, registers that exchange it uh, records it on the ledger um honestly there's so much stuff i'm just learning every day it's amazing amazing um and then uh so back in the day on the 27th of march 2019 uh craig also wrote another blog post called uh, how to make a brain wallet i do actually remember this one uh this one coming out uh so it was referring to um using a code sort of like um as a way of remembering a password so relating sort of letters to words and numbers uh you know and footnotes and things like that uh, and then working out uh what your code was um from the sequence of numbers that follow on from each other you know using certain books and things like that so fascinating stuff uh, fascinating stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also on the 27th of March 2023, uh, Nvidia calls cryptocurrency useless for society, says its graphic cards are better for AI. Would you believe it? So it says that Nvidia was once fined $5.5 million for failing to disclose crypto mining revenues impact. Oh, so a hot potato, Nvidia's history with cryptocurrency has been colourful to say the least. The company has made billions of dollars thanks to the popularity of its graphics cards for crypto mining. But it said in a recent interview that crypto does not bring anything useful to society. Again, because they don't understand it. Speaking to The Guardian, Nvidia Chief Techno Technology Officer uh, Michael Kagan said that the processing power of the company's GPUs should be used for tasks more worthwhile than mining crypto, such as powering AI-based technologies like ChatGTP. All the crypto stuff, um, it needed parallel, um, uh, parallel processing, and Nvidia is the best, so uh, people just programmed it to use for this purpose. They bought a lot of stuff, and then uh, eventually it collapsed because it doesn't bring anything useful to society. Um, AI does, Kagan told The Guardian. I mean, again, yeah, they don't understand what Bitcoin is. They have they have no idea that it's Bitcoin that actually secures the world's first ever commoditized digital network, the world's first ever commercial internet that like nobody owns and controls. I mean, absolutely massive, but obviously we know it's been um, subverted by the powers that be. So um, you know, should be listening to my show and understanding it, really, shouldn't they? Uh, right, so uh, let's go back onto this then. So with, with regard to Craig and his court case, uh, I just wanted to remind people about this, the, the 12 presumptions of court. I mean, this 
you know, this explains Judge Miller's quotes here, overwhelming uh, amount of evidence. So look at this, number seven. The presumption of court of guardians is the presumption that, as you may be listed as a resident of a ward of a local government area and have listed on your passport the letter P, again, which we all do because like nobody knows how to get anything else, you just apply for it and they call you a pauper. Uh, you are a pauper and therefore under the guardian powers of the government and its agents as court of the guardians. Unless this is presumption is openly challenged, which it wasn't in Craig's case, <clears throat> to demonstrate you are both a general guardian and general executor of the matter, which is the trust, before the court, the presumption stands and you are by default a pauper and lunatic and therefore must obey the rules of the clerk of the guardians, which is the clerk of the magistrate's court. So again, you know, literally the judge could do whatever he wants because he is acting as a third party representing the interests of the banking industry, which is the City of London. And Craig being Satoshi is just simply not in their interests. So with Craig going in there as a pauper under the powers of the guardianship and being a lunatic uh, and also um, admitting to his maritime title of doctor, being a dead corporate entity, Obviously, he can't create the uh, the network. Obviously, he can't write the white part, white, uh, write the white paper, because he's a dead corporate entity. So that's why the evidence is overwhelming to James Miller. Honestly, when you understand how corrupt the court system is, it's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and again, Craig's lawyers would have known all this, especially um, uh, Lord Grabner. He's well awake to any of this. But uh, did they um, um, did they rebut any of these presumptions of court? No, they didn't, and hence Craig lost, even though um, Copa were using statements in their closing arguments um, that didn't comply to CPR rules 31.5, which were documents that hadn't been disclosed to the court. And Patrick Madden's um, uh, supposedly independent expert opinion um, was actually written, in fact, by Bird and Bird, the opposing counsel. Honestly, what an absolute joke shop it's been. <clears throat> you know, but uh, here we are. At least I'm trying to explain this to everybody. Um, all right, so uh, a bit of news then for uh, today. Check this out. Oh, so uh, 26th of March, this was yesterday. So um, uh, Ryushi, Electronic Cash, has said breaking more Satoshi coins on the move. A total of 2,000 BTC. Many of the wallets 2010 on this list are listed in Dr. Uh, Craig Wright's Tulip Trust at the uh, Kleinman versus Wright trial. <clears throat> and when you uh, when you actually oh they're all the uh, they're all the wallets that have been listed look all the block rewards moving wow two thousand of them uh, and you can see them all here look inputs and outputs of the wallets look and in total two thousand two thousand BTC have moved in total no that's the flow. Oh my goodness me. I mean, have they all been consolidated into a single wallet? Woof. Jeepers. Jeepers. Well, you know, um, I don't think it's a coincidence that we've got the block reward coming up shortly. Jeepers. So let's look in. Let's get into the figures. <clears throat> uh, so we've got CoreCoin, Segwit Protocol piece of shit shit coin economically worthless with a market price of $71,000 oh my goodness B crash at 500 but Bitcoin at just $89 uh, block size 78.35 oh look at semi look at this even though these blocks aren't big to compared to what we're looking at we've got a 59 megabyte block there look 59 42 20 23 56 11.33, 11.62, there we go, that's the biggest one there. So that one block alone uh, will have uh, uh, more data in it than the entire column of, uh, of BTC. <laughs> <clears throat> it's currently 4.5% uh, more profitable to mine on SV. Um, interesting, it'll be really interesting to see when the block, uh, what happens at the block reward halving because there was 24 days until the BTC halving, just 8 days until B crash. Eight days. So imagine mining B crash right now, and then in eight days' time, literally your block reward gets cut in half. What incentive do you have to mine it? 
when your block reward has been cut in half. Like literally, and then there's just 16 days until the BTC a block reward halving. You know, the miners might be mining it for ideological reasons, but I mean, really, miners just simply chase profit. They should have no political um, allegiances or ideological um, alliances at all. Uh, who knows what's going to happen because this halving is going to be absolutely brutal. And then we've got Fisher Price Cash in 15 days, and we've got genuine Bitcoin in 17 days, and then BTC after that. So, could this huge movement of BTC uh, yeah, be anything to do with that? I suspect it is, but again, just speculating on it. You know, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, uh, this court case has really put the cat amongst the pigeons now that uh, um, the court has recognised Dr. Craig Wright as being a ward of the state and a lunatic, and uh, obviously evidence being overwhelming that he wasn't Satoshi Nakamoto, didn't write the white paper, didn't start the network, blah, 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 blah. Uh, just despite recognising previously that uh, Dr. Wright had expended uh, substantial skill and judgment in creating the Bitcoin file format. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm only laughing to try and relieve the stress of it all. Like, oh, it's so ridiculous. Utter corruption. Uh, let's have a look at the mining on Bitcoin. So Tau still with 56%. Again, you know, literally uh, in t terms of consistency, solid as a rock. Uh, Cube, 32.6. Mining Dutch, 4%. Gorilla Pool, 32 Um. Uh, Conium, coinium, coinium at uh, 2.6, and then QD link 0.65. Fascinating stuff. Uh, let's have a look at crypto quant. Look, exchanges are still cashing out, still cashing out while the BTC price is going up. <laughs> oh dear. And look at this. So, this is actually minor to exchange flow total. So this date here, I think it was like the 15th, 15th of June, 2023. This is when they had the case management conference uh, to the Copa case that we've um, that we've just had. I mean, look at the look at look at that block of outflow from uh, the exchange uh, from miners to exchanges cashing out, and it looks like look that that the the volume of uh, miner outflow to exchanges um, has picked up again substantially picked up again over these last three months since well, January and we're now uh, end of March Oof. I wonder if they know something we don't time will tell let's have a look at Tether oh would you believe it would you believe it let's so it's gone out to 104 203.6 so just another uh, almost like 200 million just gone in you know no biggie, honestly, R ridiculous. Oh, and over seven days, 103.7 to 104.3. Oh my goodness, six uh, 600 million, 600 million in seven days. Oh my god, and 97.9 to 104. Good grief. Seven, seven billion. Seven billion in a month. Yes, yeah, seven billion in a month. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, you know what's going on. We know what's going on. So let's have a look at the market. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. It's now two, $2.6 trillion in market cap. $2.6 trillion in market cap of absolute crap. Absolute crap. Um... BTC with a market cap of 1.3 trillion. Oh my god. Oh, it looks like the price has just uh, collapsed there a little bit. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Straight up, straight down. Good grief. And then kind of like back to uh, usual levels again. No, uh, no effery to see there. Let's have a look. See where Bitcoin is. Oof, down at 62. Uh, oh. Oh. But that's actually gone up. <laughs> so BDC went up and went down. Uh, and it looks like uh, BSV has actually overtaken that on that uh, 
on that last pump. Very interesting. Uh, let's have a look at that on DXS amp then, shall we? Here we go. Uh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. This is Bitcoin to BTC. Bitcoin's just shot up in comparison. Whoa. Whoa, that, that really hits home when you see that. Something is going on, ladies and gentlemen. Something is afoot. Hold on to your seatbelts. Right, let's have a look at Terranode. Oh, this was this was firing on all cylinders yesterday. Um, over a million transactions per second on most blocks. Do we have anything? Anything for the show? Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, damn. Oh no, we're back. We are back in business. Oh, come on, come on. Um, so we've got a block that was made literally five, six, about eight minutes ago. Oh, oh there we go. Age. <laughs> eight minutes and three seconds ago. Oh, a 22, um, 22 gigabyte block. Um, transactions in total. So that looks like a, that looks like 120 million. Uh, 586,240 transactions. Uh, yeah, processing 685,149 transactions per second. Oh, that's juicy. There, I bet there'll be some more blocks um, coming through very soon. Loving that, loving that. There we go. That is a quick 16-minute show. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as ever, you'd like, if you'd like to uh, ding me some donations, you can do at Sir Toshi uh, on Hankash. Uh, or if you're not on Handcash, it's just the payment is satoshi at handcash.io. We'll leave you there. Hope you enjoyed the show. And as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next one.